guys welcome back to the channel today we're just finished work it's about four o'clock monday afternoon had a pretty good day uh on the bricks got a few numbers in i think we got close to a thousand in today which is really good got down the side of the house which is which is good tomorrow alfresco be doing this part of the wall doing the alfresco we'll take you through that I just wanted to make a video about what's in our toolbox, what, what tools we use, our setup, more in depth. I know I've had a few comments and things from people asking me to run us through our setup and our tools. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. Let's get into it. So, like I said in the previous video, what setup we got is a, we're running with a Toyota Hilux Workmate single cab. It's what I carry all the tools in and no i don't have a trailer i am considering um upgrading to one of the isuzu tray packs something a bit bit bigger one of their mini trucks where i can carry all these planks because at the moment i do have to make multiple trips so you can see it's pretty jam full um and i have about i have actually more than these i've got about 15 planks and about 10 trestles as well um that i do make two trips so what tools do a bricklayer need first off most essential obviously cement mixer what we've got as i said in the one yesterday video we have an easy mix lightning 3.5 drum so that was the one that we we're cleaning out yesterday and as you can see did a good job of getting all that stuff off of the bonfire I know that they have really popular mixes around here in Melbourne. I see a lot of guys with the easy mix. So I know there's some other good ones around there in Melbourne. Philco, uh, who I talked to last week, who does some good mixes as well. Um, that's just what we, we went with. I know my old boss had one as well. So I just grabbed the um, yeah, easy mix for lightning. It's done its job so far. With any good mixer, you need a good companion wheelbarrow. And that's why we've got the Sherlock. I think it's a hundred litre or something. Been through it, I've got two of these. So in our setup, I do think that having two wheelbarrows is, is important. Just when you're trying to get, you know, if you have to move sand or something like that. Um, also, I just like putting two batches in at a time and then having one push it out while there's another one going straight in, straight out into the barrow. I just think two, two barrows is the go. At the moment, I can only fit one in, which is frustrating. Um, but when I get the bigger truck, I think I'm going to go for two barrows in there for sure. Thanks for that one. I always carry around some trestles, even though I can't fit them all. I always make sure I have a couple in there just to be safe. These things. Mudboard stands. I can't stress the importance of a mudboard stand more. These things are a lifesaver. Mudboard stands for me, super important. Very, very important. One of the first things I grabbed actually when I went out on my own was mudboard stands. And a few of you guys told me that you couldn't work without them. I couldn't agree more. The difference is, get your mudboard, saving your back, you're not bending over, breaking, breaking your back. It's up at a good height. Back, save the time, get yourself some good. Uh, mud board stands. The ladder. I've got a. What is this one? Sinico, I think it is. I get it out for you. Show you one moment. Now this ladder is super cheap, good standard. What it does is an A-frame. Simple like that. So clicks the buttons here and you can extend it all the way out now the controversial one that I've had and I know a few people have said to me you know, don't be cheap, go out and buy yourself a brick store. 
The truth is, I just haven't got the room to carry a brick saw at the moment. When I get the new truck, the mini truck, I'll, I'll look at, at doing that for sure. It's really something that I want to get onto health wise as well as efficiency. I do want to get myself a, a wet brick saw. At the moment, I do have the Makita angle grinder. As you can see in some of the videos, when I'm cutting bricks, I think it's, they're about $300, but they're not bad. Like, I know I'd much rather get something a bit more safe, a bit more, um, a bit more health conscious, but um, for, for the moment, if you're going out to start by yourself, this isn't a bad thing. This definitely gets the job done for me. Um, we, we would have been in all sorts of trouble without it, that's for sure, over the first two years. So the angle grinder is what I use to cut my bricks. This thing just annoys me. Just absolutely annoys me, the hose. We always fight between the two boys who's going to pack up the hose at the end of the day because it's the last thing that's left. Everything else is put away in the truck and that stupid hose is just there. No one wants to pack it up because either it's covered in mud or when you do go to pack it up and wind the hose in, you get all wet. And the water trickles down your sleeve. And, um, I know Dino hates doing it. I hate doing it. I hate the hose, but get yourself a good hose. Couple of buckets. We always make bucket mixes. We don't shovel sand in to make our buckets of cement. We all use, always use six full buckets of um, of sand to our one part um, cement and one part lime. So that's how we do it. We've got a couple of of buckets that we use to fill them up. And also, this is my toolbox. Believe it or not. One of them, I do have grandpa's old box handed down to my dad, handed down to me. It's been going for years, this thing. Where I have some, some of the tools. With this bucket, this is what we got. Joiners, we use the 13 millimeter joiners. The reason why we do that, and we have 10 mil bed joints or perp joints, is because we can push in with the bigger bigger joint joiner knowing that it's not going to push a hole and, and completely um, take the mortar out of the perps. So you push it in and it gives it a nice round, rounded effect. Brick hammer. I've had a few in my time. The Vaughan, this one here, seems to be really good. Probably can't see it, it's full faded away. Vaughan brick hammer, really strong stuff. Just feels nice in the hand. It's not one of them ones that are too top heavy. And you go to use it, and it feels like it's freaking things gonna fall out of your hand. So, this one's really good. Obviously, trowels. This is a boy's trowel. I wouldn't let mine get to this stage, but Marshalltown. It's what we use. We're using the, um, the Londons. And I just can't go wrong with the Marshalltown, in my opinion. We do have an ox. We do have an ox as well. I don't mind ox, I like their stuff. Um, this is one of their bigger ones as well that sometimes I feel like getting some more mud on the beds. This big thing, absolute bazooka, look at the size of it. Dutchy, dash jointer, clean out our weep holes. Perv clamps here, BT engineering, like I've shown you in some of the videos already. I've also got a brand new one over here. Stuff. Guys from BT hooked us up. As you can see, nice, heavy duty. Got our bags of cement there. Got to have plenty of these. What else is in the treasure chest? Oh, look at this thing. What have we got in here? Hard brush. When we've joined our wall, we actually do it twice. So join it once, brush it down, join it twice. I find it comes up really sharp with the finish. Essential, a bolster. This is the ox one that we have. Very important if you if you need to cut bricks. Um, you got bricks that cut really well and sharp. My favorite tool that I go on and on about. 
when I can get to it. This is it. Steel corner block. BT engineering. Very important. I have about eight of these at all times for your profiles. They're very good. Got the little pins at the top there. Keep the line on nice and square up and run your lines either way of the profile. Easy to slide up and down. Must have. A lot of people ask me about the um, brick trolleys or buggies. Do we use any of them? The answer is no. I have done a couple of load ups uh, videos, but we use the BT Engineering uh, brick catchers. We just sort of old school that way, I guess. Just like manually getting our work out in at the start of the job. And um, we have uh, six of these, so everyone grabs two and we just go for it. We load it up by sort of that way, manually. We find it's a good workout. That's what we do. Um, as far as profiles, uh, I don't know if I profile, oh yep. We've got a small profile in here. Profiles, we use the um, square hollows. And the fact is that they're so light and easy to carry around, being hollow and not them real steel heavy ones, that um, you can afford to do that. I just find they're lighter in the back of the ute and um, they do their job well. So that's the 100 by 100 square hollow aluminium for our, for our profiles. On the arms, or the brackets, again, this is a quite a skinny one. Um, I usually have about 12 or so of these brackets as well in our setup. BT Engineering, nice and easy, just um, clout or even screw them on like that. Sit on the wall, put your profile up against the, um, against the corner there. And must have some good brackets, some good arms, good profiles. I recommend using the square hollow aluminium for your profile. Gauge stick. We have on this gauge stick, gauge rod, 86 millimeter gauge, 87, 88, and 85. Chuck it up against the profile and gauge up your, your work. So the next most important thing is your levels, in my opinion. So, right here, I carry a 1200 Stabila level that we've just recently put a bit of acid on to clean off so we can actually see through them, as well as the 1200. I'd also recommend having a two meter. Be two meters Stabila. And as well as that, we do have, wherever it is, a 600. I don't know quite where it is, but I've got the three levels. I've got the 1200, the two meter, and also have a couple of little um, 600 meter levels as well. We've recently got these spaces, just a bit of aluminium. 10 millimeters um, thickness that we're using as well as this bigger bar here expansion bars so we just place them in our AJ's uh, if there's something here as we're bricking up at the start of the job we just chuck our 10 millimeter spacer in there run that up against the door or window or wherever an AJ is we plumb it up obviously and put a little mark on the top or put a couple of nails in either side to make sure you keep that straight and you can just butt your bricks up to there. Highly recommend getting yourself some spaces. Moving on from that, we've obviously got our PPE and our safety stuff, which I'll show you. This is my, this is my baby, which I have gone on about a few times in some of the other videos. But an Arbortec, well worth it. You gotta have one of these tools. Now you don't wanna be pulling down bricks, understand that. You should be, shouldn't be uh, needing to pull them down, but when you do, Arbortec, the AS170, pull out bricks as easy as you like. 
as easy as you possibly could. A lot better than using a grinder or something like that. We can kick back here, this stuff. Usually have a dust protection here. Um, these are really essential when you're pulling out bricks, in my opinion, save you a lot of time. We've got our dust filter, very important. Got our earmuffs, a couple of pairs of them, a couple of dust masks always for the other boys that are working in your area as well if you're cutting bricks. I've also got a mini, mini grinder that we use for them little places that you can't quite get with a big 12 inch. We use this little baby. Um, what else? Just some things that you, of course, just handy to have on the side. We've got some tin snips in here. Got tin snips. Got stapler. Nice Stanley stapler there. What else? Little joiners. Little tools in here. Mm -hmm. Pieces of profile I find really helpful when you need to clamp something. It's not quite enough. Um, you need something to put in between to clamp to a bit of timber, for instance. I find these little pieces of profile really handy to have. Um, we've got a lock, sometimes lock my mixer up on site. Chain. Oh, a couple more of these. Hose nozzles. You always seem to go missing. Always have an extra couple of them. Mm. Heap of V clamps or F clamps, however you like. Standing clamp, I usually have about 20 of these. You can never have too many, especially when they get knocked off and go missing a mountain. And yeah, a couple of saws. I've got a hand saw down the bottom there, knife. As well as this one over here. This power saw that I do take, sometimes I cut some timber when you, those chippies out there don't do their job properly. <laughs> and yeah, always always keep a scraper on tight, make sure the driveways and everything scraped down after the job. I do want to get a bigger one of these. Um, yeah, that's about it. Got a couple of cords, bottle of hydrochloric, I always keep on me just in case. Dangerous stuff. You want to be wearing your PPE when you're using this stuff, for sure. A bottle of plasticizer, as I mentioned in the other videos, really helps with um, <clears throat> just making the mix a lot more workable for a lot longer. I find this is the Dabco Bricklayers plasticizer. We use a cap of that in with our mix. Uh, what else have we got? A couple of square mouth shovels. I don't quite long like these longer ones I just find that the heads on them are a bit too small you don't get enough um, bang for your buck there so we use the little square sh square mouth five dollar shovels and that my friends is just a quick very quick uh, overview of what tools you need as a bricklayer going at your own what I use my setup so feel free to leave a comment let me know what you guys run with what, what tools I don't have that I should have um, or, or what tools you might think work better for me and, and I can look at investing in. As I said, I want to get a bigger truck where we can fit all of our stuff in. I have mentioned that before and um, hopefully that happens sooner rather than later so we can get all these planks and everything, all these tools on at once. But that's what I'm using. Here's the, here's the baby. It's a nice night here, Melbourne. Just a quick rundown of my toolbox and my ute and what it looks like so i hope you enjoyed this video guys don't forget to leave a like comment down below and um don't forget to subscribe we'll see you in the next video cheers guys